Um, hello, uh, we are at SNT AI 2022 in Minneapolis. I'm joined by Jennifer from AIM. Hi. Thanks for coming over. Thanks for having me. Um, now, it's, um, it's great to be at a show like this where it actually feels like a proper trade show. Um, you know, we've had some very odd ones in the past. Um, but we haven't spoken before, so give me, give me an overview of your business and, you know, how it's, the show's been for you. Yeah, sure. So, my name's Jen. I work for AIM Solder. I'm AIM's technical marketing engineer. So, it's my job to connect our customers' needs back to R&D to collect data that then feeds back to our customers. So in the last few years, um, shows haven't really been as much of a thing. So the, the turnout for this show has been really great. And we've been able to present data, be on panel discussions. So we're really trying to make the most of everyone getting together here. And they've been well attended, actually, haven't they? You know, all, yeah. that's the good thing. Both the technical conferences and the expo has been pretty well attended. I think everyone's really eager to be back in person. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's been a strange time for the industry because even though we've had the, you know, the, the pandemic thing, it, a lot of it didn't slow down for a lot of people, you know, you kept developing and for a lot of people it gave you a chance to look at your own business. And, yeah, exactly. You know. Like right at the beginning of the pandemic there was a bit of a slowdown but after that things seemed to pick up in an interesting way because at the same time business was doing just as well but we were doing that hybrid approach of right. in person versus online. Uh, but mostly online, uh, now that we don't have the same restrictions, we're finding that the hybrid approach really works for us. Um, being here at the show shows that you know you can't replace yeah. in-person contact, meeting people, but you can get a lot done by yeah. you know just staying at home and doing it on your computer. So uh, we've always been a international, like spread out company. Some people have done remote work, um, but now we're just finding that whatever works for someone, they have the opportunity to do, and we're finding a lot of success in that. Yeah. So is there, have you brought anything new to the show? Yeah, so actually this year we're presenting research on low temperature solder rework. So oftentimes when people are implementing low temperature solders, they're looking at paste in the reflow aspect of it. You know, they look at um, the application, they look at the commingling of alloys, the reliability, but no one thinks about the inevitable rework. And uh, we found that a lot of customers, you know, they're printing low temperature paste, but they're often reworking with SAC 305 flux cord wire. And that's just because that's what's most commonly on the rework bench. Right, yeah. So for people who are doing that, and people who are also looking to use low temperature solder throughout their assembly, uh, we wanted to take a deeper dive into yeah. these material considerations, both in how you need to train your operators in using these materials, and what that has, uh, how that affects the reliability of your assembly. So we just did that presentation today yeah. um, to just give our customers a bit of a, you know, some insight on what it means to use these materials. How much how, and time-wise research went into that? Oh, it, this is going to be a several phase uh, research yeah. project um, because any good experiment just leads to more questions, I feel like. So what we did is we uh, assembled several boards under three different conditions. The first condition was SAC, uh, excuse me, the first condition was low temperature paste, yeah. reworked with that SAC 305 flux cord wire, which we're considering like the most common um, like case. And then the second case was the low temperature paste reworked with actually solid wire and an external flux like a, like a liquid or gel flux. And the solid wire is the low temp wire. And the reason we use this as opposed to a flux cord low temp wire is because um, the shelf life of low temp flux cord wire is super short. That's one thing. And two, a lot of times people are u using low temperature soldering alloys to help reduce costs, such as minimize uh, energy consumption, and also because low temperature alloys typically are less expensive than like sac alloys or anything that has um, more significant silver con content. So actually when you, so when you produce flux cord wire, it's pretty much a long metal tube with flux in the middle of it and bismuth is infamously brittle. So when it comes to producing flux cord wire, it's a continuous extrusion process, and due to the brittle nature of bismuth, you really need to slow that production down. So that means low output, means a bit of a higher cost, and if the reason you're trying to implement a low temperature solder is to save costs, 
<laughs> you might not want to use flux cord low temp yeah. wire. So that's why in our study we focused on using the solid wire and the external flux. And the final condition was using just traditional sack paste rework with sack right. flux cord wire. So that in itself yeah, yeah. was, a, we yeah. had to print all of those boards and then we reworked all of those boards. We wrote down all the you know different techniques that you should use when using these different materials. And then we cross-sectioned these joints to look at the intermetallic right. formation and the commingling of the alloys. And then we did shear testing to measure the uh, relative mechanical strength of these reworked materials. And that was just our first phase That's because <laughs> the, the outcomes of that study showed us that you really, like to be able to get meaningful data in a rework setting, there's a lot more variables aside from just materials that you need yeah. to control. Yep. So our shear testing was all over the place. Our, um, our IMC formation did show that you can create like quality solder joints using these different materials, but it just showed us that you know the the techniques you use in rework, the um, the amount of solder you apply in the rework setting, the contact time of the iron when you're using the solder wire, all matters. So what this has enabled us to do is say, okay, if we still want to get to the bottom of this, we need to refine our experiment and. It, our future work will include us looking at that contact time of the soldering iron and also uh, the tip temperature. So if we're using low temp yeah, materials, yeah. you think that you can potentially lower the temperature of the iron, which will inevitably save people money because then that means there's less stress going on to the soldering iron tip and less, um, less they have to buy tips less often. Yeah. So we've really opened a can of worms yeah, here. Yeah. But it's quite an eye isn't it? But, yeah, yeah, because we just thought that this was like a huge gap in the knowledge of both our customers and yeah. in published literature. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we've, like I said, opened a can of worms. So we're excited <laughs> to continue to yeah, figure things out yeah. because people are already using these materials. There's just no good documentation on yeah. their effects. Yeah. Like you say, it's, yeah, well, we, we do that because that's the way we've always done that kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, because it works, but we're like, how well does it work yeah. and what does it mean? No, it's fascinating. And like, you know, it's exciting to be involved in something like that, isn't it? Because you actually, oh, yeah. It's not just do one thing to prove it. It's we've found this out and it Yeah, it was a bit ongoing. It was a bit unsettling at first when we saw our data all over the place. Um, but if anything, it means that we were doing the experiment correctly because rework is so well, in variable. A, yeah, a working environment, it will yeah. be, won't it? You know, there'll be variables every day. Mm -hmm. kind of and if we were to go out and give a presentation and say, oh, this works perfectly every time, yeah. everyone in the crowd would say, what are you talking about? So we think that this study really reflects what's yeah. going on in the real world, yeah. and we're excited to continue going down yeah. uh, this path. And it's well received, I guess, as well. Yeah, well, everyone said, they're like, no one's talking about this. And um, so, yeah, people are interested to learn more. It's fascinating, yeah, that's no, good. Um, and how long have you been with the company? So I've been with AIM for about a year and a half right, now. Yeah, yeah. I'm a recent graduate. I studied chemical engineering at yeah. the University of Rhode Island. But while I was a student, I was an intern for Chris Shea with Shea Engineering right. Services. Yeah. So actually, back in 2019, pre-pandemic, uh, I attended SMTAI in Rosemont with her. Right. So it's been really interesting to see the other side <laughs> yeah, of things, yeah. um, both just as exciting. Yeah. When I worked with Chris, I mean, she's the one who taught me all about SMT because, right. I mean, you don't learn this stuff. You learn the principles of like the mechanics of the materials and stuff like that in school, but you don't learn how they're applied. Yeah. And um, I was a bit of afraid of a circuit board the first time I saw it, right. but yeah. uh, once, you, once you start learning about the process, it, uh, I got excited and but it's, it is very different to be a student and now be like in the industry yeah. um, because, well, now I'm a bit more comfortable with the material. I have a, a few more familiar faces, uh, but it makes me excited to continue to bring other young people in the industry because there is not only a lot of opportunity, but yeah. it's, a, it's cool technology that we work with. Yeah, and it's, you know, in the UK, similar to the US, that there's a, there's a skill shortage. You know, we, we need to get people in here. And it's quite heartening yesterday seeing the number of students that are walking around. We've got this passport system yeah. going on, which is great. But also, 
the mix, there was a lot of female students there as well, which, you know, and it's, it's a failing of the industry that it's never attracted, you know, it's one of the, I guess it's, a, it could be a bit of a complacent kind of industry because it's always kind of been there and there's mm -hmm. people, once you're in it, you're in it for life mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, but yeah, to see those people come around and then everyone I've spoken to is saying, yeah, we need that because they're the yeah. lifeblood of... I know, would agree that this year compared to 2019, there are far more students, far more women and young women too, yeah. which is great to see. Yeah. Um, and I think that something like the Young Professional, they had, did that passport event where yeah. you know um, young professionals would go to different companies and stamp their passport. Yeah. It was a really great idea. Yeah. Um, and it's... It is nice to know that some of the like older generation is so willing to you know train people and yeah. and I'm really fortunate that I not only had a expert in the field train That's me but also a woman too yeah. so she really gave me the confidence to you know not be intimidated yeah. I guess and at the end of the day what we're doing is science yeah. it's engineering and your gender and the way you look has nothing to do with the work that you're putting out. Um, so if we can just continue to encourage people and, yeah, and I think show it's, people how exciting it is. Yeah, that's, no, that is it, isn't it? I think also the way it's changed a little bit now with electric vehicles mm -hmm. and people, oh yeah, you know, the applications, it's right in face kind of thing. Whereas yeah. before it's like, yeah, we use electronics all the, all the time, but you just take it for granted. Yeah, this is, it's... People call this a niche industry, but I totally disagree. <laughs> with that, with that. <laughs> because yeah. it's in, and that's yeah. what got me so excited at the beginning, right. because it's literally in every single electronic device. Like yeah. this assembly process, I mean, we're looking more at like the mass production side, but that's where all of our stuff comes from. Yeah. And I think a lot of people just don't realize, like, no. that that what's going on yeah. in the background. But once people get an idea and realize that. This industry is the intersection of so many engineering disciplines. Like, and I studied chemical science. engineering, yeah. but like people who study mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, industrial, like we all need each other. Yeah. I, I love being at this conference because, you know, you say, oh, this person is an expert, and that person is an expert, but no one really knows everything about yeah. everything. We all need each other. So, yeah, there's so much room for growth and different types of expertise yeah. and different types of perspectives yeah. to come into this industry. Definitely, yeah, that's no, fantastic. Um, well, congratulations on the paper you presented. I think that was, uh, yeah, and that's, that's going to run for a while, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, thanks for spending time to talk to us, and I hope the rest of the show is for you is really good. Thanks for having me. Good to meet you.